Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm the Campaign Marketing Manager here at eLearning Brothers. Today, we're going to be talking about how to improve company culture with your training program. It's going to be a great session. We will record it. It uh, will be sent out to everybody who has registered, so you can watch that after the fact. And feel free to share that around with anybody that you think may benefit from today's discussion. If you have questions or comments during the webinar, please use the questions panel. That's a part of the GoToWebinar control panel there labeled questions. We'll get to as many of those as we can. Uh, we'll be asking for your feedback periodically throughout the session as well, so please put it in there so we can address it and uh, participate in the discussion. If you have not already, please feel free to check out our community, the Rockstars community. That's at rockstars.elearningbrothers.com, and I'll stick a link in the chat for you as well. There's a section about uh, e-learning tips and tricks in general. Uh, we've got sections for all of our products like Lectora, Scenario, v Scenario VR, the Asset Library, the Rockstar Learning Platform, but there's also sections on games, a section about learning development, sections on Articulate Storyline, Captivate, iSpring, PowerPoint, uh, lots of very good discussion there, so please join it at rockstars.elearningbrothers.com. All right, so we have fantastic guests today. We've got Josh Bledgy, one of our product managers. Thanks for joining Josh and taking some time out of your day, as well as Rachel Grisgoviak, Client Marketing Specialist at Biz Library, and, and we're very excited to hear uh, what Rachel has to say about these um, these company cultures. She was bragging to us that hers is so good uh, there at Biz Library, so I'm excited to hear what you guys have to share, and without further ado, I'll turn the time over to you, Rachel and Josh. Thanks, Andrew. So, um, hi, everybody. My name is Rachel Griskoviak, and as Andrew said, I'm the Client Marketing Specialist at Biz Library. So just a little bit about what I do as a Client Marketing Specialist. I work with both our client success and our marketing team to ultimately build stronger client relationships through a variety of resources and communications. So what I do is I spend my days researching best practices and industry trends. So I'm really excited to talk to you guys about company culture today because building strong connections is something that I'm really passionate about and lucky to experience at Biz Library. And a little bit, just a little bit about Biz Library. Uh, we are a leading provider of online learning for growing organizations, and we have an award-winning micro-learning video library that engages employees of all levels. Biz Library's off-the-shelf content includes a wide variety of business critical topics that help empower organizations to solve business challenges and impact change within their organizations. Biz Library's content collection is both skill-specific and strategically designed to meet the needs of both training program administrators and employees alike. And so I'm Josh Bledgy, so I'm a product manager here at eLearning Brothers. Um, obviously, if you've been to our webinars before, you're familiar with what we do. Um, but I am mainly focused on our subscription content between either courseware or, or asset library uh, subscriptions and whatnot. So that's all what my responsibilities include um, here at eLearning Brothers. But we are very grateful for this partnership that we have with Biz Library uh, to be able to have their content be a part of our offering here. Uh, with the Rockstar Learning Platform and and just on its own as well. Uh, so we're really excited to have Rachel here with us today to 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 have this discussion to talk about company culture from both perspective of eLearning Brothers and Biz Library's perspective as well. Um, so we're really excited to get started here. So let's start out with just a quick poll here. Um, we want to know how you would rate your company culture. Is it great? Does it need some improvement? Is it non-existent? or you're just not sure how to answer that question. So just take a second to answer there. Um, looks like Andrew has put the poll up already for you. Uh, so just go ahead and click on the screen there. Yep, click right on the screen. Is it great, needs improvement, non-existent, not sure, company culture, uh, You know, where do you stand? A good chunk of you have participated. We'll wait about five more seconds. Go ahead and just click directly on the screen for the one that fits. Three, two, one. Okay, here's those results. So 60% of our participating audience said that their culture needs improvement. 22% said it's great. 9% said they're not sure. Maybe we need to define company culture a little bit more before they're ready to make a, a rating like that. And then 3% uh, are saying that it's just non-existent. Well, that's, that's interesting. So most of you stand in the it needs improvement um, and kind of curious what your thoughts are going to be as you go through what we have to discuss today um, and why you would say that your company culture needs improvement what what makes it what where do you see areas that it could improve and 
we'll have some more time to, to fill us in on that a little bit later, I think, as well. Uh, for those of you that have great company culture, good for you. We're happy that you're in companies that have a very solid experience there. For those of you that's not existent, hopefully we can give you some tips on how to maybe start, you know, jumpstart your company culture within your organization uh, from a from a training perspective, if nothing else. Um, there's a lot more that goes into it, um, which kind of brings us to where we want to start is, you know, how do you define your company culture uh, at your organization? So uh, if you wouldn't mind putting that in the chat there, Rachel and I are going to share a little bit of our experience, but if you wouldn't mind putting in, you know, what how you would define company culture um, in the chat, and Andrew's going to share a couple of those uh, here in a moment. But Rachel, I know like we we've kind of boasted about how good biz library is at culture, um, but tell us why, tell us about it. Um, like what, what's your company culture like, you know, how is it, we know that like this last year has changed a lot of people and changed a lot of companies. Uh, so how, how was it before, you know, the pandemic started and how has it changed uh, from, from then till now? Sure. So I know when you think about culture, that can be really hard to define. And when I think about it, I think it's like trying to describe a color, right? Like you know how it makes you feel, but it's kind of hard to put in words. But at this library, our culture is pretty explicitly defined. Um, and that's through a combination of our mission, vision, vision and core values. Um, and the core values are really the tangible ways that we live out our culture. So we have our different mission statements. Um, but the one that I wanted to point out is, instead of going through all of those for you, is one that we focus on is developing employees that are smart, driven, curious, and caring. So our recruiting team does a great job of trying to find culture additions who fit that uh, statement. So we are looking for individuals who add to the culture, who are smart, driven, curious, and caring. And we really hold true to that throughout our entire employee journey. Um, and we also have clearly defined core values. So I wanna share our core values with you all. Um, maybe it can give you guys some ideas if your culture is non-existent, just to uh, explain how our culture is defined at Biz Library. So our core values are build successful partnerships that last, freedom to fail, enjoy the journey, giving back, passion to be the best, respect others, and smarter every day. So those are our top seven core values. And when you're hired on at Biz Library, you go through this immersive onboarding experience and we call it boot camp. So it's not as scary as it sounds, but every day during boot camp, Monday through Friday of your first week, um, you get to know, it's all about getting to know you as a person and getting to know Biz Library. And each one of those core values is really a staple theme for each day. Um, and when you graduate, boot camp, you become a certified Bizzler. So that's what everybody at Biz Library is called. We are all Bizzlers. Um, so that's just another playful and fun way um, to be engaging and create that culture. Um, and one of the things I wanted to highlight in our boot camp is our scavenger hunt. So we have this great experience where you, on your very first day, what we used to do this in person in the office, is you would go around to each person in the company and we would have this grid of fun facts and you would have to go find that individual that matched that fun fact. So for example, my fun fact on the grid is I like to write in calligraphy. So it not only helps you get to know a little bit about that person, but it just sparks uh, a genuine conversation and connection and you really start to build those connections right away. Uh, so how did that change uh, at, with the pandemic? So for me, I was a new hire right before the pandemic started. So I had just started getting used to the office and start building those connections. And I was a little nervous how that was going to be as a new hire and how that culture and the feeling I was having um, experienced in the office, how that was going to be present in a virtual setting. But because Biz Library has a strong company culture, and we really did not skip a beat. We just kind of shifted a little bit. Um, so we shifted our onboarding boot camp to a virtual setting. Um, so we do everything through Zoom meetings and um, the scavenger hunt is done through video calls. Um, and now we have a dispersed workforce across um, across the United States here. So not everybody is located in 
St. Louis anymore. And so we are still making connections and getting to know each other uh, across um, our dispersed workforce. Um, but really what I want to point out is out of all the things that we do and the different ways that we were celebrating our culture through maybe it was lunches at the office or a secret Santa gift exchange, you can still have fun and make those connections when your people uh, are are sharing a common vision and making those connections with each other. So I'm excited to share with you guys throughout this presentation some different ways that we've made it work at Biz Library and some different uh, tips and tricks that you guys can uh, practice within your organization. Cool, awesome. So, so if you guys want to hear a couple of these that came in from the audience, uh, yeah, this person says I'm at a, a university and they still don't have a work from home policy even though thousands of us have been working from home for over a year. Another person says we have values uh, values based collaborative culture. Um, another one, our culture is kind of disconnected. The pandemic created a lot of holes. Mm -hmm. We're trying to refill at the same time that we're pivoting in our strategic plan. We're redefining our culture. So um, you know, trying to this webinar can potentially help these people to really lay down uh, an outline of what culture is and give us some ideas on how to to make those changes. Yeah. Great, thanks Townsend for sharing those. So from a eLearning Brothers perspective, um, so my view on our culture, so before the, the we, uh, you know, if I had to define what our culture is here at eLearning Brothers, um, it's really that we treat each other like we're family. Um, that's been kind of the vibe that I've had from before day one, um, really it's came into when I started my hiring process here at eLearning Brothers is, uh, my, my story is a little bit unique because uh, I got, um, my first interview was directly with our CEO, Andrew Sibley, a friend of mine introduced us. Uh, but Andrew's a very unique individual. Um, and I don't mean that in maybe it, that's, uh, that's sometimes used as a con negative connotation, but I mean that in the most positive way possible. Uh, because he, he didn't know me before I came in. And we had met once before previous um, to this meeting, but it was very brief. Um, but I show up at the office and the first thing he does is takes me around to all the departments in the in the office, shows me around the office, shows me the break room, introduces me to people either intentionally or just because they walk up to us um, and say hi. And then he proceeds to spend about 45 minutes with me one on one just in an interview, uh, which um, is very unique when you get that experience to sit with a you know high level executive. Um, in a one-on-one -on -one setting and by the end of the interview he decided yeah I might be a good fit here so he wanted me to meet with somebody else and so he got me connected with them but he also says you know if this doesn't work out and you're still looking for a job I know people in the area so let me know and I'm, I'm happy to make some introductions which you never see that from people um, and so I felt from that from just that interaction made me think okay I really want this job I will do whatever it takes to get this job and it really um, uh, was a, a good starting point for me. And that's just the vibe that we have here going forward is we've, yeah, we do all the fun stuff. We have a foosball table. We play games at lunch together. Um, we, you know, we just have enjoy being around each other and, and we enjoy working with one another. Um, and that's just been kind of our consistent thing is we, we enjoy each other and, work, and we work together well. We don't have as clearly defined stuff as what Biz Library has. Um, especially since the pandemic started, as probably many of you know, uh, shortly after the, the, you know, most states went to a work from home system, um, we acquired a couple of companies. Um, so we acquired Trivanus, which is the company that made the Lector authoring tool, and Edulence, which is where our Rockstar Learning Platform came from. Uh, so we were, so last year was really us building up, you know, integrating systematically. Um, and so culture kind of had to take a little bit of a back burner because we were all kind of melding that together. We were doing our best to bring them in to our company culture. And I think we did a fairly decent job at that, making sure that everyone felt welcome, everyone felt like a rock star, everyone got their orange, you know, uh, shirts and whatnot, uh, because that's really who we are. We're this kind of vibrant, loud organization here. Um, and we still actually, we recently acquired another company to the training arcade, uh, the game agency, which makes the training arcade product. Um, and so we're in the process of integrating them into our, our company as well. And, you know, that's a, a different challenge, right? Because you're dealing with 
not only a dispersed workforce now that's not just here in our Utah office, but as well across the country. We have people, we have big gr groups of people in Florida, the Northeast, um, a little bit in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and so we're trying to figure out how do we do this? So we're not, we're not, so we have a good culture here, but we're still noticing that we have some gaps and we have some places where we can improve too. Um, and so we're working on that. We have the same challenges I think that a lot of you face, but really, you know, what defines um, a company culture? When we're saying like positive, negative, good, bad, what are we saying? Um, so a good a company culture or one that is very positive will provide growth opportunities um, and has an accessible leadership team. Like I talked about Andrew Sibley, uh, being the first person to interview me here at Elaine Brothers, he's still very accessible to us. Not maybe in that same way, but he's still there, very visible to us, um, walks out and says hi all the time. Um, same thing with the rest of our leadership team here at ELV. Um, another hallmark of a good culture is that your workspaces are comfortable, whether that's here at the office or when you're working from home, because uh, now that is an extension of your office, whether um, we wanted it to be or not, it is, it is now. Um, and then there's genuine connection. There's a feeling of belonging there with that company. Obviously, a negative culture exhibits the opposite of all these things, um, including, you know, like unfriendly competition, lack of flexibility, willing, you know, not willing to be movable and change with has as the organization changes. Your employees don't feel like they're autonomous. They don't feel like they have what they need to get their job done. Um, there's also a high absentee rate, meaning that, you know, People just don't show up and do their job. Um, and a lot of times there's misconceptions as to what actually makes your culture good. And I just want to be kind of clear at this point that a culture is not free snacks. It's not a foosball table or a ping pong table. It's not swag. I mean, obviously I'm wearing a lot of orange right now, um, but that's not our culture. It's not the shirt. It's not the swag. It's the feeling that we have with one another when we're um, when we're proud to wear this color and proud to wear this, these logos and things on our, on our, on our chest. Um, and it's not, you know, other benefits and perks. So like those things are great and they help amplify your culture and maybe are vehicles to help you get there, but that's not your culture. Like you, your culture needs to come down to stripping all those things away. What are those feelings and impressions that your company, that your employees have about your company today? Um, and how does that influence how they act and how they work and everything? Sure. Thank you for giving those definitions. And as Josh said, it, it is a lot. It goes a lot deeper than just on the surface items. So I want to give you guys some actionable steps that you can take to either define for the first time or redefine your culture if you're going through a transformation. So the first step is to align your objectives. What do you want your culture to be? What do you want that feeling to be perceived as? Align it with your organization's mission, vision, or core values, or maybe it takes time to actually create those core values if you don't have any. Um, so for us at Biz Library, when we were in the office, we actually explicitly had our core values um, on a bulletin board on the walls. And so each core value had their own little bulletin board. And when you saw um, an individual um, model some behavior, you could write a note stating that you were what the experience was the individual and maybe they really showed passion to be the best you could write down what they did and put it on that bulletin board um, and so why we have that is because we want our core values to be the vehicles and really what we want to model behaviors um, and be intentional with our culture because if you're not intentional or deliberate then your culture can kind of form accidentally or it can just you know it, it can just form like on its own without you guys stating what you want it to be. And so that can be harder to transform or um, or change. So just think, what do you want your personality uh, of your organization to be known for? So when we were in the office, we had those core values physically listed on the wall. But now that we have a dispersed workforce and we're working virtually, what we are doing new is we actually have something um, that's going on today. So it's really exciting. We have our core value awards. So we're having a big meeting with the whole organization and one individual from the company gets awarded um, the core, a core value award. So if you were the number one individual to really model giving back, 
then you get to be uh, rewarded and recognized in front of the entire company. So I think that's really great and special and it rewards positive behavior. And I think that we can really give thanks to this because we have one individual, Libby, who's our director of talent development and culture, who is really dedicated to pushing um, and initiating these new, fun, engaging ways to show our culture. Step two is to involve the entire organization. So whether it's through awards or recognition, it's important to involve the entire team from your recruiting team to leadership, um, making it an all immersive experience. So having the recruiting team look for culture additions rather than culture fits can make a difference. Um, and also starting off on the right foot by setting those um, expectations in your onboarding experience. And then again, having leadership reinforce those behaviors uh, throughout. And that is one of the best ways that you can transform your culture. And step three, and I kind of alluded to it before, is to celebrate positive behavior and recognize when your employees are exemplifying behaviors that do support your culture. Um, another fun way that we do this, and just more ideas for you guys to write down and try at your company, is we have our company's intranet, and we also like to shout out um, recognition to everybody, and we call them bravos. So um, that is another great way to give visibility to, uh, to individuals who are doing the right thing, and we really like to celebrate that. Yeah, yeah we do something similar here as well, like we do a uh... We have a Slack channel that's dedicated to singing praises, and it started out as this product team meeting get together. You know, go start putting these praises on, but it, in the Slack channel, but it's now you know, spread across our whole organization. It's really cool. And like, so this is an idea that I really, really enjoy this positive feedback, this pros this positive uh, behavior change and um, reinforcement there. So we have another poll. Um, what do you feel are your company's biggest challenges in relation to building a strong company culture? So, Andrew, if you wouldn't mind putting that up on the screen, um, and feel free to just click. You can click multiple on this one um, if there um, is kind of two or three that fit uh, with what your needs are. Um, if you don't see what you want listed on here, we only have listed a few, um, go ahead and just tell us in the chat what um, other challenges you're facing as far as your culture. Some of them you've mentioned before, where there's not a work from home policy, where there's um, just some challenges with you know strategic uh, change and thing whatnot, but whatever um, whatever other challenges you're facing, please let us know. That pulls open again. You can click right on the screen and you can click on more than one of them. Maybe your biggest challenges is every single one of them. Go ahead and let us know. We'll give you guys about five more seconds. Three, two, last chance. One. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this won't add up to 100%, but you can definitely see those that are the highest uh, on here. So low employee morale and poor communication are very high on this one. Um, second is the lack of leadership buy-in, then no clear vision, and then quite a few others, and I imagine most of the others are typing here. Um, here's one, being a public, public sector organization, we have differing structures and leadership that don't always allow for a centralized culture. Mm. So there's, there's one challenge. Another one, we have a strong culture in terms of all of the cohesive and team building recognition. However, the issue is getting people to work together outside of their honeycomb. So it's a, it's a team culture, but not necessarily a company culture. Okay. There's, there's some thoughts. Interesting. Yeah, those are all um, very big. Like that's interesting, the, the kind of the, the team culture versus the company culture. Because uh, you do see that a lot, right? Where it's just like the the team works well cohesively together, they have a good system. But then, yeah, you take that outside of that small team, and it gets a little bit more gray as you get further out. And I think even within companies that have a good culture, um, you'll still see that happen. Um, like there's the overall company culture, but I think each team has their own little perspective. But I can see how that creates a challenge when you're looking at your bigger organization as well. If that higher level culture isn't established at first. Um, so yeah, I think we've mentioned a lot of these main challenges, you know, the poor communication, lack of and lack of leadership buy-in and low employee morale, those were three of your biggest ones there. Um, the dispersed workforce is another challenge that we all face now. Um, as many of you mentioned, working from home has caused some problems, some rifts maybe in your culture. 
I know for us here at ELB, that's created a challenge where now we're, like I said, we're not all centralized here in Utah anymore. We're spread about. And so that can get really hard um, to, to take care of. And one of the reasons for that is just because a lot of that culture used to be defined by interactions here in the office. So I actually have a quote I want to share with you. This is actually from my boss here at um, Elan Brothers, Christian Weeble. Um, he's our chief product officer. In a recent presentation, he said, you know, what is culture? It's shared beliefs, it's common expectations, it's ceremonies and rituals. And these things are, used to be way easier to do in the office. And even before then, for a lot of people, they're still a challenge, right? It's still, still a challenge to find the shared beliefs. But a lot of these things are determined and reinforced by interacting with one another, by making communication open um, and being able to, um, you know, bring everybody together. Because I think for us here at ELB, like one of the things that's always been a hallmark of our organization is, again, our, our leadership team is very accessible to us. Um, we are still able to, you know, send a message to, you know, anybody that's any of our leadership team and ask them a question if we need to. I mean, we do have this expectation that you try to, you know, go up the chain of command, right? But um, they're still there. They're still going to answer you as best as they can or direct you back to who should answer. Um, and, but, you know, our company wouldn't be what it is without that, without that open communication. So for those of you that have that, I know that that's harder to set because sometimes you're in a middle level or a lower level position and you're trying to say, well, the leadership team should be doing this. Well, um, the best I can say to that is just, you kind of start being that person that is open and trying to get everybody together. Um, and then others will notice and kind of it will snowball is what I would say. Um, but those interactions are very important. And whether that's virtually or whether that's in the office around the water cooler or the foosball table or whatever that might be for your, for your organization, the lunchroom, whatever that might be. Yeah, and so we want to share with you guys some ways or best practices that you can keep in mind when you're trying to overcome those challenges. Um, so whether you relate to one of those challenges or all of them, here's four good ways that you can support a positive culture. The first is having healthy communication. So this is a two part deal. So one, we communicate with each other on a daily basis. And it's important to make sure that type of communication is healthy, um, to be mindful of the other people that you're talking with and confirming end times of meetings, being polite and prompt, setting expectations, you know, all of those things. Um, whether a conversation is needs to be urgent, it needs to be an IM, or whether it can be handled in an email or a video call, all of those things are important to be mindful of. Another way is when you're talking with your coworkers and your peers and leadership to really understand the person that you're talking with. So when we are in our biz library boot camp and onboarding, one of the first things we do is everybody takes a personality ass assessment. So there's tons of these out there, but the one that we used was called Intrinsics. And it's very simple, but very accurate and helpful. So it gives you four colors, um, green, gold, orange, and blue, and each color are categories. And it gives insight to who you are, how you think, and how you like to collaborate. So for example, I'm a gold person, so that means I like order, lists, organization, and my team knows that about me um, because this is shared not just with your team, so this is uh, accessible to everybody in the organization. And that way they know how I work best when I collaborate. And then I also know their color as well. So when we were in the office, we had Legos. Um, so this was such a fun uh, physical piece to show people when it was on your desk and you would order your colors. So I would have my gold color on top and then green and then orange and blue. That was the order of my colors and it kind of explained my personality a little bit. So that was fun uh, to have in the office and a great way to connect. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of these personality assessments out there and I highly recommend checking these out. Next is to build camaraderie. So this is more like a goal rather than a best practice, but to something to keep in mind. Again, find ways to stay connected to your team and even others across the organization. So again, this is for you all who have the challenge of having great team culture, but a difficult company-wide culture. So one way that we do this, and I, I know I'm giving you guys a ton of examples, but I'm hoping that this can spark some ideas for you and you can uh, go back to your organization with some new ideas 
Uh, but we have a mentor program at Biz Library uh, that connects a more seasoned employee from a different department with a new hire. Um, and so that's great because it really stretches those connections across the company. And the person who is a mentor is, um, is a good example of model behavior and can really push that culture in another way rather than just your leadership. Um, but also your leaders are great as change champions and to model that behavior. Um, so that is a great way to get employee buy-in across the entire organization. If your leaders are on board, that will stretch across the rest of your entire uh, workforce. And the last is to uh, focus on engagement. So yes, you're focusing on your day-to-day -day communication, like I said, um, beginning with healthy communication, but don't forget to have fun. That is a huge thing. We live our core values um, at Biz Library every day. And like I said, ours are pretty explicitly like detailed laid out. So one of the ways we do it is um, giving back is one of our core values. So we have a giving back committee. We have um, enjoy the journey is one of our core values. So we have an enjoy the journey committee that uh, comes up with fun ideas. There are the people involved with coming up with secret Santa or all of those, uh, you know, fun, fun events across the organization. So really the goal here is don't just have words, core values, mission just kind of plastered on a wall, but finding ways to make those words a reality is what will make a difference in your organization. And for those of you that do, you know, want to see more, you know, need more statistical analysis as to why, you know, a good company culture is essential to the organization. Maybe you have a CEO or, uh, you know, a uh, higher up that is more data driven. Um, there's plenty of studies that have shown that, you know, building your company culture um, is helpful to the organization at, at large, um, you know, from employee engagement, to just profitability and productivity. But to me, I think one of the biggest stats on this this um, this slide here that I want to emphasize here is the fact that company culture is also why employees stay with an organization. A lot of times they leave because um, they don't feel like they're wanted or needed here, uh, which from a training perspective is something that I know everyone is kind of involved with because you're, when you're onboarding or there's turnover, like you, you need to train them and that, or there's a cost associated with that. And there's always the old adage of, well, what if we train them and they leave? And well, then they left, but what if we don't train them and they stay, right? Um, and so providing this training opportunity is really where we wanna focus um, as we you know, continue this presentation. And so one of the big stats here that I wanna show is this 94% of employees would stay with an organization if they felt like the organization invested in their career. Um, and this is really where we want to, you know, uh, go here in a minute is to show you um, how you can, you can implement a training program to be able to enhance your employee culture. Sure, and so I don't want to go through all of these, but here's the top benefits of having a positive company culture. And so it's always important to speak to your why when you're speaking to your learners in your training program. So here's just some ways to speak to your why. Why should you care about having a positive company culture? Um, as Josh said, 94% of employees would stay longer if a, at a company if they invested in their career. So that's really what we want to get into here um, on, the next, uh, on the next slide about establishing a learning culture. So what is a learning culture? So SHRM has a great definition and a learning culture consists of a community of workers instilled with a growth mindset. So people not only want to learn and apply what they've learned to help their organization, but they also feel compelled to share their knowledge with others. So that sharing piece is one of the biggest pieces of emphasis here in that learning culture. Um, and that's what a growth mindset is too, when employees are always seeking out knowledge and wanting to share that with their peers. So why should you want a learning culture? So as we know over the past year, change happens. Change is always gonna happen internally and externally. Agility, change management, resilience, those are all really popular topics right now. And they're not just buzzwords. They are very important um, because being agile is a huge competitive advantage for organizations versus companies that are not. 
So having a learning culture not only improves your overall training program by having high utilization, by having learners getting into your program and participating in self-directed learning, but when you establish a culture of learning, then organizational agility will naturally follow. So let's get into how can you build a learning culture. And we can go ahead, awesome, thank you. So how can we build that learning culture? So number one, use your training program as a tool. Um, so you already have your training program, leverage that. And having a large content on-demand library like the Biz Library Collection really gives you that option to teach and push those soft skills. Um, so focusing on important competencies like problem solving, critical thinking, and decision making helps empower individuals um, and team members to make educated decisions. Um, and also having that up-to-date training content that's available 24 seven, that's very important. Uh, so having that accessible on-demand learning option that's built into your training program and your culture um, is going to make a huge difference. So some strategies that you can use to encourage and support learners is to be accessible and to share those resources and best practices and find ways to promote learning wherever you can. Having a central source, so having that one on-demand central place that your employees can go to uh, for just-in-time learning is important. Finding learning gaps and finding ways where you can improve. Um, so that is all about finding different ways to upskill and reskill your learners. And then lastly, spread. So that sharing piece, so spreading this across the organization. Um, and again, just to emphasize, having that on-demand piece for um, the learning culture is big because you want your learners, your employees to go out and participate in exploratory learning and self-directed learning. Um, and so for them to be able to have that at their fingertips and having quick micro learning videos, um, similar to what we have available in our Biz Library collection is very important. So just in time training, it makes it accessible. Um, and then something I don't have on here, but we've kind of emphasized this throughout is to still make it fun and reward positive behavior to make this a continuous pattern and not just a one-time thing. Yeah, as we've kind of outlined already, there's different areas where you need to start training your people. Um, there's obviously going to be some prescribed things that you need to train on, like you know compliance, things like that. But there's a lot of times when you'll need to just allow them to choose their own path. And we'll get into a little more of that here in a minute. Uh, but this personalization becomes super important to employees these days to be able to feel like their company cares about them and where they're going. Um, again, like we said, that 94% feel like they would stay longer if the company invested in their in their career. Well, training is a big part of that. Um, and that reskilling and upskilling piece where they're learning skills not just for their own, their current job, but they, you know, as they you know, could move up, could change departments, you know, the subskilling idea of getting more skills so they can continue to improve, that's very important. And not just giving them the professional skills that they need, the hard skills that they'll need, but then the soft skills like Rachel was mentioning, um, because that's really what creates a well-rounded employee. And those are kind of people that you want to have around. Because if you have just a good performer that does their job kind of robotically, that's nice. That gets you a lot of productivity. That gets you part of the way there. But, well, they might not know how to deal with people or, or whatnot. If they deal with the customer, they're a little more abrasive, things of that nature. And you want to make sure that you can give them all those skills that they need. And just some kind of stats on, you know, what employees want from their training content. Um, they want their managers to, to suggest it. They want to be told, okay, here's some suggestions for you. It's not necessarily telling you, you got to go take this. It's prescribed. It's saying, well, I found this useful. I think this would be a good skill for you to learn, you know, telling them those kind of things. Uh, many of them want to learn at the point of need. Um, so if there's a task that they're performing, I mean, think about YouTube, for instance, right? Like, I'll, I'll be honest, I, you know, edit a lot of videos in my job now. And majority of the time, if I can't figure out what I need to do, um, and within editing, um, I'll go first to YouTube and look for a video that tells me how to do it. Um, you can do that with your LMS too. You could put training up there and that could be their first source of knowledge that they need to go to for their, um, when they're at the point of need, but that has to be available to them. There's also the idea that they want to be able to learn at their own pace. So again, don't, per, don't necessarily prescribe the learning path for them, let them make their own journey and, and 
and make that work. Um, and then there's also just giving them the time to work um, because most are time to learn because while they're at work, they want to be able to learn then, not when they're going home. Like they don't want to, they, anytime that I like, I kind of operate under the, the, under the assumption that when I leave the office or, you know, when I'm at home and I leave the office, um, quote unquote, um, that my time is my own at that point. Um, and so if I choose to do some work stuff, that's my choice. I don't necessarily be prescribed to do that during my off hours, right? Um, and that's what most employees seem to gravitate towards is this idea that um, they want to be able to be given the time. And a lot of, there's other statistics on this to show that people want to just be given the time to be able to improve their skills uh, while they're at work, which sometimes can be difficult depending on your job, but um, those are very important things to think about. Yes, and just so reiterating the importance of embracing that modern learning solution and providing your employees access to on-demand library that gives them the ability to have that self-directed learning, um, as Josh said, is very important. Um, and so, for example, in the Biz Library collection, we have seven topic areas. One of them that's very important is we have a business skills area. So some of the things that are in this topic area are health and wellness, project management, presentation and facilitation skills, time management, personal and career development. So all of those pieces can help you develop a learning culture and really support your employees and let them know, hey, we're invested in you and we care about your personal and professional development path. And especially having that health and wellness piece in there too. Um, in the Biz Library collection, we have videos to help you uh, support mindfulness at work or stress and anxiety. And all of those pieces are huge uh, when it comes to making your employees feel invested in and that you care about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just again, some more, um, you know, what other things do employees want from their training programs? Um, they want to be able to have a social collaborative experience. Again, part of building a culture is feeling that genuine connection with each other. And a lot of that can happen through your learning program. Uh, you can, you know, socialize and collaborate, collaborativeize, I don't think that's actually a word, but collaborate, you know, build a collaborative environment for your training program. Um, and again, like we said earlier, they want to have it personalized. And so this is a pretty cool stat, I think, from LinkedIn's 2020 workplace learning, learning report. All those previous stats, the majority of them were from the 2018 study, but this is a newer, newer version of that study that breaks it down by the different generations. And so take a look at this chart. It's pretty interesting um, because you find that, you know, no matter what generation they belong to, they want to be personalized to really by a vast majority. But then the social and collaborative one is interesting just if you notice the dips where they're at. Like you would expect the baby boomer, the baby boomer generation to maybe be less into the social and collaborative side of things uh, just by nature. But you see the millennials are kind of a little bit lower too than some of these other organizations. And so, um, it's really interesting to, to watch that and see that um, these stats and how they, these different generational learning things happen. Uh, but you know, you're probably thinking now, okay, well, this is all well and good. Well, how exactly do I implement this within my organization? Um, and how do I get these this social aspect, this collaborative aspect, this personalized aspect? Like, this is all great, but how do I do this? Well, for us um, here at eLearning Brothers. Um, We've thought about this problem a lot. And like I mentioned last year, we acquired um, an LMS called Knowledge Link, which we've now rebranded as the Rockstar Learning Platform. And the Rockstar Learning Platform isn't your typical LMS. It's not just a, you know, up there to track SCORM, you know, SCORM files and track completion and whatnot. Uh, we've really built in features now um, that meet all these different needs where you can socialize learning, you can collaborate on learning. Um, you can pull in content from all sorts of different aspects of different places. Recently, actually yesterday, we launched the possibility of the, the feature to just link to a YouTube video that now plays within the platform and scores it tracks completion. I used it yesterday for the first time. It is really neat uh, to be able to just pull in these kind of informal learning things. But again, it gets everything on demand. It gets them right into your hand. The nice thing about the platform too is it is mobile responsive, so it works well on a mobile device. Um, it brings all your content 
to that point of need, whether they're at a computer or whether they're on, you know, a tablet or um, a, a, a smartphone. Uh, so I'd encourage you to check it out. We'll provide you a link to a more full-featured demo of the platform um, that we did about a month and a month and a half ago or so. Um, we'll send you that link via the um, follow-up email if you're interested in learning more. But one of the other really great aspects of the platform now is we have integrated content libraries because the technology is good, but it's a system that unless it's populated, it doesn't do anything for you. And so we've integrated with Biz Library and allow you to just use that content into these personalized learning paths. Even allow we even have a tool to assess your employees' interests and, and needs and skill gaps and assign them different content based off of what they're doing. And you can do that with the Biz Library courses. Um, those are now built in. Um, and we are even more excited to kind of announce um, that we started um, after this partnership, we've been partners for about six months now selling this uh, content as just what's called the Biz Library Productions uh, Bundle, which is all of Biz Library's internally produced content, which is really great content um, and provides a lot of variety and breadth and depth. But we've expanded that now, and we're now selling the what's called the full Biz Library Collection, which allows you access to about 35 different content partners, if I remember correctly, Rachel, correct me if I'm wrong on that. but um, and also brings in like this adds software training to our offering and more more you know different skills more more niche stuff as well um and so now we're able to sell that not just as these big overall libraries where you get you know 2500 or 8500 depending on if you pick the productions or the collections we can now tailor your content down to a certain package of 250 courses as well. So if you're interested in that, uh, feel free to um, get in touch with your bit, your learning village representative and, and talk to them more about that. But that's really all that we have today um, for um, talking about your culture and how to establish that. We do want to emphasize um, these three steps again. So Rachel, if you wouldn't mind just briefly going over these for everybody again. Sure, so if there's three main things for you guys to remember, I want you guys to walk away with these three items. Number one is align your culture with your organization's mission, vision, and values. Your people are your biggest asset, and this is one of the easiest ways to build and maintain positive company culture. Involve the entire organization. So this means from recruiting all the way from the beginning to new hires, uh, all the way to leadership. So it's a company-wide effort. And then lastly, use your training program as a tool to build a culture of learning and respect. Make training a priority and leverage those tools that you already have. Yeah. Thanks. So we'll open up. We have a few minutes before we reach the top of the hour, but um, Andrew, is there any questions? I'm gonna go ahead and move to this last slide here um, while um, you come back online here. Uh, for the Rockstar Learning Platform, again, if you want a demo, Feel free to contact us um, and we're happy to give you that. And that that demo will also include the biz library content as well so we can show you what that looks like not just in the platform or just in general as well um, and how that can meet your training needs so andrew is there any questions for us there's a lot of comments uh people just continuing to add the challenges uh that they're facing and i think we have a lot of people on the the call that that aren't in uh, positions of leadership to the point where they can determine a, a company culture um, or you know you can you can try to live a culture um, but not determine it and implement a systematic program for your audience so um, can you guys speak at all to uh, how to bring this up for those that do have that sort of uh, power sure so if you want I can start Josh um, sure. And if you're not in that position, then I think that your first priority is to really work on gaining that leadership buy-in. Um, since it is a company-wide initiative and that is what is going to make the biggest difference, work on leadership buy-in. That's easier said than done. I know that can be a challenge in itself, but whenever you're trying to gain leadership buy-in, always bring it back to the why. So if you need to share some stats or examples that Josh shared, some of those statistics, those are great. So bringing it back to the why, bring it back to the numbers, um, you focus on how the impact of a positive company culture and how that can help you attract and retain top talent. So you can 
bring that to how expensive it can be for employee uh, turnover as a separate challenge. So that would be my biggest piece of advice is to make it a priority to gain leadership buy-in. Yeah, and I would agree with that. I think that's your your best route is to go, you know, present to your leadership team however best you feel like they would respond. It like Rachel was talking about the personalities and whatnot. You know, whatever the personality happens to be, to where are they a stat stern person? Do they need to see some hard facts to really say, okay, yeah, we need to start investing in this? Or do they work just anecdotally, say, you know, you know, do you know if we don't invest people again, they will leave, and that cause like I know with leadership, if you bring it back to real dollars. Uh, they tend to start to listen a little bit more because then that's you know their bottom line, that's the company's bottom line. You know they want to be able to um, look at that and say, okay, is this a good investment or not? And really, investing your people is one of the best things you can do um, from an organizational level uh, because they're really the reason why you're making you know profits at that point. Um, so yeah, focusing on that buy-in. I think the other piece of advice I would give is I know we talked about you know team culture. Um, you know, and some negatives that can arise behind around that. But I think there's definitely a lot of positives by just, you know, those that you can affect do affect, you know, um, and start, you know, building that positive culture, even if it's just your team. Because I think what will happen is then other teams will see that and they'll want to do the same thing. And the more people do that, you know, build these little nucleuses or maybe even like combine and merge, um, you know, this idea and how they want to work with one another leadership can't ignore that for very long um and they'd want to you know make that a part of what they're doing because they will most likely notice that they're their more productive teams they're their more profitable teams those those kind of things so. there's a couple questions about how training um can apply into this uh, people looking for more ideas I, I wanted to to reiterate something that josh had said so we acquired edulence who were the creators of knowledge link a year ago and in that in the last year we have devoted a lot of our time to developing um, that software into the rockstar learning platform and the rockstar learning platform is powerful in its uh its communication both ways from the learner and the teacher there's channels where learners can communicate back we have learning paths where you can build these custom uh learning paths for people based on their needs based on their team and Building something like that inside of your LMS where you're saying, you know, you can have your learning path for your team, but the entire thing is encompassed inside of a, a, the company's learning culture um, or whatever you would like, you know, wherever you want your culture to head down. There's a specific question uh, here that says, I'm, I'm starting brand new, creating all of our training. I, I was brought onto the company to create our formal training. And so I, I, I have the luxury of a clean slate. What advice would you give me uh, to get started? Here I am at the very beginning. What advice would you have as I head down this road? I think, oh, that's a clean slate. That's a nice, that's a nice place to be uh, because you're not bogged down by all the negative that might have been coming with, um, you know, legacy content. But I think the biggest thing here is Rachel mentioned core values a lot early on there. Learn what your company's core values are, and then how your how your content can um, help enforce that. Um, make sure that that's kind of at the forefront of what you're doing, and you know what your company stands for. Whether that's you know you're building onboarding training, those things kind of definitely come in. But even when you're talking about compliance and things like that, the things that you have to do, um, those can be very helpful. I think also then sourcing your content because I know like trying to create a whole training program from scratch is really hard. Um, and I've you know, started my career here at ELB uh, building um, off-the-shelf courseware and, and whatnot. And so we had, a very, we had to build a huge library very quickly, which is very akin to probably what you're doing now with you know, your clean slate here. But when you're in need of help, uh, your easiest and fastest way to get content um, that's applicable to your, to your organization um, is to go look for a content library like Biz Library. Um, and go look for those partnerships so that way you can build out that library quickly and then look for technology that will help you get there and so again you know you know the rockstar learning platform is built to do that it's built to adapt and to work for your organization as best as you need it to and it applies all the reporting things that you need from an lms so look for these technology pieces and this content piece that you 
uh, need to build out this organization and make the business case for it, um, as well as to why you would need that um, in order to reinforce again for leadership team, you want to bring it back to real dollars for them as, you know, this is the investment, but here's the return on that. Um, and just, you know, focus on those things that, you know, are important to your organization first and then move on to, you know, build it one step at a time. Uh, really, but if you need to do it, it get sounds started. like you have the power to to influence the culture inclusion mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. So that's a fun and challenging spot to be in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, one last thought before we we close out here. Um, this person wants to give some advice for leadership buy-in. I work in a big company, and we've been using Poll Ev for our uh, or Poll Ev for our company meetings, allowing employees to speak their mind anonymously and folks vote up or down. So leadership has addressed those top vote issues that are coming in anonymous, anonymously, and it's been very nice, uh, a nice outcome from COVID. So uh, yeah, anonymous feedback uh, is always useful. Sometimes really hard to receive, but useful. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so that's all the time we have for today. We'll go ahead and just remind you guys, I put a link in the chat panel to the Rockstars Learning Platform. That is in, inside of the Rockstar Learning Platform, you all have access to uh, Biz Library and all of their awesome tools and courses. We will send a recording of this video out to everybody. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, we'd love to continue this conversation on the uh, the Rockstars community. I'll put a pay, paste a link there in the chat for that as well. And we'll include a link to that in the follow-up email. And we did mention, I don't, I think, there's a handout in the GoToWebinar control panel. So if you would like to download that handout, it gives a little bit more information, something that you can take and, and use to get buy-in and, and things like that. There's It's good, useful handout. So please download that and we'll include that in the email as well. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Josh. This has been very, very useful. I think we all learned a little bit of something today and we'll be able to take that into our, uh, our company cultures at home or at work or wherever we may be working now. <laughs> Thanks. Thank Talk to you guys later. Thanks, everybody. It's been a pleasure. Bye.